medical director of the hemophilia program here at St. Michael's Hospital. And we're going to take this opportunity to show you some of the new products that are being made available for hemophilia treatment. So we're all going to go through this transition in the coming weeks and months, and this will help you to make your decisions along with our input. So let's get started. The hemophilia team that's presenting this program is myself, my colleague, Dr. Michelle Schulzberg, and uh, uh, our hemophilia nurses. Now, Paul Tassioni is our uh, hemophilia nurse, um, and Paul could not be available today, so one of our other nurses who many of you know well, Joanne Solarski, will be filling in for Paul and speaking to you about the nursing component of the upcoming product switches. So let's go through the treatments for hemophilia that we have available. First of all, the products that are made available right now, which you're used to, and this is in all of Canada outside Quebec because Quebec has a different blood system. So we, are, we have products supplied by Canadian Blood Services. And this is the concentrates that are supplied to us now through Canadian Blood Services. You're familiar with these. We have Cogenate FS, we have Advate, and a small number of uh, people are on Zintha. So what's going to happen to these concentrates now in the future? Well, Cogenate FS is being replaced by the manufacturer with the next generation, really its successor product, which is going to have a different name. It's going to be called Covaltry. Advate uh, will not be available in the future, and that's because Canadian Blood Services has not renewed the contract with the manufacturer to, pr to purchase it so it won't be routinely available. There's nothing wrong with the product. Advate has been a, uh, a good, safe, and effective factor eight concentrate. It just won't be available to us. Zintha is going to be available in the largest amounts, and we anticipate that a lot of people will be switching over to Zintha. A small number of you are using it now. It's the product used widely in Quebec, and it's used in many European countries and in the United States. So what will be available then in the future? So here's the lineup that you're going to be seeing uh, going forward. First of all, Covaltry, which I uh, already mentioned, uh, which is the successor product to Cogenate FS, Zintha, which is already in the system, and two products that some of you may not have heard of yet, one called Nuvic and one called Eloctate. And I'm going to explain what all these products are to you. So let's go through them. First of all, Covaltry. Covaltry is what we call a full-length recombinant factor VIII concentrate. That means it's an unmodified full-length factor VIII molecule. It's replacing cogenate FS, and it's produced in the same cells as cogenate FS. And these are hamster cells. They're called BHK cells. But it's, the success, it's, being, it's replacing co cogenate because it's even more similar to normal human factor VIII than cogenate is. This little cartoon just shows you what factor VIII looks like, and this is the Covaltry molecule. Now, the same cells that produce the factor VIII protein, these BHK cells, are also engineered to produce another natural protein called HSP60. And this is done in order to improve the characteristics of the factor VIII and to make its production more efficient. Now, Covaltry is not an extended half-life product. A lot of you have heard this term extended half-life factor VIII, it's, although it's not an extended half-life factor VIII, it does in fact have somewhat longer uh, half-life characteristics than other hamster cell derived full-length factor VIII concentrates. And that reflects the fact that it's a very human looking molecule. And here's some of those data. A lot of you are familiar with this concept of half-life. That's the time it takes after you've injected a factor VIII concentrate for that concentration to fall to half the level you achieved with the initial shot. So what this shows is that cogenate has a half-life of approximately 12 hours, which is typical for factor VIII concentrates, whereas Covaltry, it's close to 14 hours. So it's a small increase, but it is an increase. Now, every time I'm going to use the term half-life, I put this little asterisk to remind you that half-life is highly variable, and these are averages. But individuals will vary by a very large amount, and that's why we like to do half-life studies person, uh, person by person. So who is likely to use Covaltry? Well, most of you who are now using Cogenate FS and are happy with it will likely transition directly to Covaltry. 
This transition will not require any special clinic visits, won't require any pharmacokinetic studies, half-life studies, that is, unless there's another reason to do them. And the infusion sets and the vial sizes will be identical to Cogenate FS, and Joanne will be showing you these details a little later. Only the labeling will be different. The name will be different, the colors will be different, but it's essentially a, a very similar product. Now, some of you who are currently on Advate may be interested in switching to Covaltry because it's similar in that it is another full-length hamster cell-derived uh, recombinant factor eight concentrate. And if you're happy with that concept, then you might be interested in switching to Covaltry. Some of you who are now on an, either an alternate day or a three times a week infusion schedule may do well on a twice a week infusion schedule of Covaltry. And that's been shown in the clinical studies that led to its approval. And that reflects that slightly longer half-life of Covaltry compared to uh, Cogenate, the precursor product. So let's talk a little bit about Xintha. So Xintha is an unmodified B-domain deleted factor VIII molecule, also produced in a hamster cell line, a different cell line. And it was a successor to a product some of you may remember called Refacto. And when I say B-domain deleted, the cartoons show this. This is a part of the factor VIII molecule called the B-domain. And this is the Refacto molecule or the Xintha molecule without the B-domain. And that can be removed from the molecule because it doesn't have any function after the factor VIII is produced. We've known that for many years. But otherwise, the molecule is unmodified, meaning there is nothing attached to it. It's factor VIII. It's being used, as I already said, by hemophilia patients in Canada, mainly in Quebec, but also elsewhere in the country, and in many countries around the world. It's what we call a third generation factor concentrate, as is Covaltry, meaning that it doesn't have any animal or human proteins in the production or in the formulation of the product. And again, it is not an extended half-life factor VIII product. So who will likely use Zintha? Well, as I mentioned, CBS will be, the Canadian Blood Services will be supplying Zintha in very large amounts. They signed a contract with the manufacturer to make large amounts of Zintha available. So we anticipate that many or most people who are now using Advate will switch to Zintha. Uh, and those who are already using it, not large numbers, but those of you who are already using it will likely continue to use it. And it's possible that some of you who are now using Cogenate FS may be interested in switching to Zintha. And that's something that we can discuss with you if the product sounds attractive to you. Now, the next product that I want to discuss is called Nuvic. Nuvic is an unmodified, B-domain deleted, human cell line derived recombinant factor VIII. So this differs from Zintha that I just spoke about because rather than being derived from hamster cells, it's derived from a human cell line. And the reason for that is that the human cell line origin theoretically leads to improved pharmacokinetics, meaning better recovery after injection and better half-life, and a reduced inhibitor risk. And the reason is because since this is a human cell line derived product, the factor VIII that results from it is as human looking as possible. And there are some slight differences in the way a hamster cell and a human cell produces factor VIII. Indeed, the half-life in children is longer than that reported for Advate. And the reason that we consider that important is that factor VIII recovery in children in general is poorer than it is in adults. And in fact, the half-life in children for Nuvic was similar to that of Eloctate, which is a true extended half-life factor VIII product, and we're going to talk about uh, Eloctate next. So who will likely use Nuvic? <clears throat> Probably not a, a lot of people, but some of you who are now using Advate or Cogenate FS may be interested in switching to Nuvic if you like the uh, concept of a human cell origin factor VIII and you uh, prefer a product which does not have any modification to the factor VIII protein. And some people who are on a twice, uh, may do well on a twice a week infusion schedule of Nuvic, and if you uh, are currently infusing more often than that, you may be able to cut back on that schedule by switching to this product. So the last product I already mentioned is called Eloctate. And this is a product which is new in the system and uh, as Nuvic is, 
and is the first modified factor 8 that we have available in Canada. So this is, like Nubic, a B-domain deleted human cell line derived factor 8, but the difference is that it is modified. It is conjugated, that it is chemically, meaning that it is chemically linked to FC. FC is a portion of the immune globulin molecule. So why is that done? FC conjugation, which has been used for other drugs, it's not a brand new technology, it's done in order to extend the half-life, meaning the survival and the circulation of proteins. Now it turns out that when we link FC to factor VIII, the degree of this half-life extension is unfortunately limited. So it does extend the half-life, but not uh, to a great degree. The other uh, adva potential advantage, theoretical advantage of FC conjugation, uh, as well as the fact that it's a human cell line origin, is that theoretically it might lead to reduced immunogenicity, that is, reduced risk of factor VIII inhibitor antibodies. Now I should say that those of you who have been using any factor VIII product for many years, your probability of ever getting a factor VIII inhibitor is extremely low already. So when we talk about this reduced risk of inhibitors, we're mainly really referring to young children who have not been treated in the past. But the principle is that um, we think that perhaps conjugation and perhaps human cell line origin might reduce the overall risk of an immune response. And some of you who haven't had much factor VIII over the years, if your hemophilia is not severe, this um, uh, immunogenicity uh, characteristic may be relevant to you as well. So this shows the half-life of eloctate, and you can see the uh, uh, the injection would be given here, and this is how it declines with time. And this shows the decline of Advate. This shows the decline of Eloctate. You can see these curves are clearly separated, showing that the half-life in this study for Eloctate was 19 hours compared to about 12 hours for Advate. So that's about a 50% prolongation in half-life. And again, I'll remind you that this is highly variable. These are averages, but there's a lot of variability from person to person. So, who will likely use a lock date? Well, some people who are now on a prophylactic factor VIII regimen and who have difficulty maintaining their current infusion schedule will, uh, may be interested in switching to a lock date and going to a less rigorous or less frequent infusion schedule. Some of you who are not now on prophylaxis but who might be encouraged to try it on a twice weekly or even every third or fourth day schedule might be uh, interested in switching to Eloctate. So that's what is coming up and that's coming up right now. These products are now available and these switches are, will be coming up over the course of the summer and the early fall. But just to give you a little preview of things which are not right now available to us but we can expect to see in the future to give you a little taste of what may be coming. Let's, let's look at what other factor VIII concentrates might be made available to us in the foreseeable future. First of all, I told you that Eloctate was the first extended half-life product available in Canada, but there are other new extended half-life factor VIII concentrates. And these use different technologies. I told you that Eloctate was conjugated to this protein called FC. The other approach, and a lot of you have heard about this, is pegylated factor VIII molecules. PEG stands for, or refers to polyethylene glycol, which is a form of sugar. And by attaching polyethylene glycol to factor VIII or to any other protein, you can extend the half-life and perhaps um, theoretically reduce the risk of inhibitor formation. <clears throat> Another approach to extending the half-life of factor VIII is called single-chain factor VIII. One of the manufacturers is, uh, has produced this, and that's shown here on the right, pegylation shown on the left. And these are the are two other approaches that are being used to make extended half-life factor VIII. Uh, those are not yet in the system here, but they will be in the foreseeable future. Now there's some other things that are a little farther off perhaps, but these are other novel approaches just to let you know of what may be coming. And these are treatment approaches that don't use factor VIII concentrate at all to treat hemophilia. So how does that work? Well, one approach is to change the balance between bleeding and clotting that is between hemorrhage and thrombosis. So this shows you what the normal, uh, in the upper left here, shows you what the normal coagulation system uh, looks like when it's in balance. 
So we have two of the, fact of the um, coagulation proteins shown here, which you're familiar with, that is factor eight and factor nine, and those, of course, promote normal blood clotting. But balancing those out, we have other proteins and other factors which regulate the blood coagulation system and help to dampen it. And two of these uh, molecules are called antithrombin, or AT, and TFPI. So when those are in balance, we have the normal situation. Now what happens in hemophilia, shown in the upper right, if factor eight or factor nine are missing, you get an overbalance of these, uh, what we call anticoagulant proteins, and you have a risk of hemophilic bleeding. So we have a deficiency of the coagulation proteins, we have normal um, anticoagulant proteins, and we have a, a bleeding uh, situation. On the other hand, uh, if we have a deficiency of antithrombin, we don't have deficiencies of TFPI, but antithrombin deficiencies do occur, and if you have normal factor eight and factor nine, this leads to thrombosis or abnormal blood clotting. So another approach then to treating hemophilia, if you've got factor eight or nine deficiency, instead of replacing the deficiency, what if we created a deficiency of either antithrombin or TFPI? So we have two deficiencies which balance each other out and restore a normal balance. So that's a long-winded description, but that's the approach that's been taken uh, in two of the products, or more than two of the products, that you'll see coming uh, over the next few years, and these are already in clinical trials. So one approach is to block the action of one of these anticoagulant proteins, TFPI, and another approach is to prevent the production in the cell, in the, in the body, of antithrombin. And these are both now uh, reality. They, are, they have been tested in animals and they're now being tested in humans. And one of the advantages of these is that they can be injected subcutaneously, that is under the skin. You don't need an intravenous injection. And they're long acting, so they can be injected only infrequently. The other advantage, of course, is that since you're not giving factor eight or factor nine, there's no risk of inhibitor formation. So those are other potential approaches in the future. Yet another approach is to do something which simply takes over or simulates the role of factor eight. So you have to understand what factor eight does, and this cartoon shows that factor eight's role is to bring together two other proteins. One of them is factor nine, and the other one is called factor 10. And this shows that factor eight kind of brings them together on on this surface, which is a cell surface. So what if you could find something else that brings these two proteins together and isn't factor eight? Well, that's been done. So there is a, what we call a bispecific antibody. So it's an antibody that recognizes both factor nine and factor 10, brings them together on the surface of the cell. An antibody is called ACE910, and this, this uh, uh, molecule, ACE910, is now in advanced clin clinical trials and looks like a very promising agent, which has the same characteristics that I showed you earlier. It's given subcutaneously under the skin, it's long acting, and since it does not involve factor eight, uh, it will not lead to factor eight antibody formation, or of course can be used in people who ha already have a factor eight inhibitor antibody. Another approach, which is a reality now for, <clears throat> for factor nine and starting to become a reality for factor eight, is gene therapy. So gene therapy inserts the gene for factor eight into a cell, typically in the liver, allowing the liver to be the site of production for factor eight. So you'll produce factor eight yourself in your body if you've had the gene therapy um, without correcting the deficient gene, but just adding a normal gene and uh, allowing you to uh, resume factor eight production without needing uh, shots of factor eight concentrate or fewer shots of factor eight concentrate. Even farther in the future, and this is technology which is really cutting edge, is gene editing. That is actually correcting or editing the gene defect in factor eight. So that's true, uh, true cure or tr true correction of hemophilia. And the technology for this actually does exist, but it'll be a while before we see this, but I think ultimately uh, this is going to come true as well. And in the future, here's another interesting approach. Uh, what you see here is exactly what it looks like, and that is lettuce. 
And this is factor eight or factor nine. In this case, it's factor nine, which has been produced in plant cells. So this is actually lettuce that contains factor nine. It can be formulated for uh, oral administration, that is in pill form, uh, with another protein that protects it from digestion in the stomach and could, if this uh, technology works out, allow you to treat hemophilia A or B with, uh, with a pill. That is uh, not in the immediate future, but I show it to you because this is technology which might be coming uh, uh, in, uh, in the foreseeable future. So we're going to turn now to hemophilia B factor 9 deficiency. So my colleague, Dr. Scholzberg, put this together. She couldn't be here today, so I'm going to uh, describe this uh, on her behalf. So there is one new factor 9 concentrate that's available to us from Canadian Blood Services and which will be of interest to some of you who are now using uh, standard recombinant factor 9. And this is called Alprolix. Now, Prolix is a recombinant factor IX FC fusion protein. So I already talked about FC. This is the same molecule that is attached to Eloctate to give an extended half-life factor VIII product. And the extension of half-life without Prolix is considerably better than it was with Eloctate. You remember that the FC conjugation of factor VIII produced only about a 50% increase in half-life whereas with Alprolix, the degree of prolongation is much greater. It's about threefold, so that's a lot longer uh, half-life than we get with, um, or prolongation than we get with the factor VIII FC conjugate. So it is the first, and so far, the only extended half-life factor IX that's available on the Canadian market. And what this provides one is the opportunity to dose less frequently, for example, every seven days or sometimes even every 10 to 14 days. And this shows the long half-life curve of the Alprolix molecule. So who might be interested in using Alprolix? Well, some of you who are on prophylactic factor IX infusions and who are having difficulty with your current infusion schedule, you might be interested in switching to Alprolix. Some people who are not on prophylaxis but who might be encouraged to try it on a weekly infusion schedule might be interested as well. Now there will be other extended half-life factor nines coming along, so some of you may prefer to stick with what you know and what you trust and what you've used for many years uh, rather than uh, using the first product in. So there are other new factor nine products that will be coming uh, available. Rixubis is actually a standard half-life recombinant factor nine similar half-life to Benefix, so it's not an extended half-life factor IX concentrate. But these other two concentrates are extended half-life. One of them is called, right now, N9GP. This is a, I spoke about pegylation, that is adding this polyethylene glycol molecule. It can be done to factor IX as well as factor VIII. So this gives a half-life extension which looks even, uh, on average, a little bit longer than that uh, of Alprolix and also has better recovery than standard um, uh, recombinant factor IX concentrates. There's another product called Idelvion. This is a fusion protein, but it's instead of uh, using uh, FC or PEG, this uses albumin, which is a normal blood protein. So albumin fused to factor IX uh, has given on average an extension, half-life extension of about five-fold. So this is so far the longest half-life extension we've seen. And again, better recovery than standard factor IX. Recovery means how high your factor IX level gets when you uh, inject it into, the, uh, into your uh, veins. And again, I'll remind you that half-life is highly variable. So this is the end of my presentation. And I'm going to turn it over now to our, my nursing colleague, Joanne Solarski. Joanne is going to talk to you about nursing and practical aspects of how we're actually going to do the switching. And she'll do this on behalf of Paul and Rachel and Antoinette and uh, all of us here at the Hemophilia Program. So I'll turn it over now to Joanne. Hello, my name is Joanne Solarski and I'm one of the nurses with the Hemophilia team. I'm here today to provide you some of the nursing perspective and the practical considerations for giving these new treatment products. The first product that we're going to discuss is Zintha. As you can see on the screen, all of the supplies that you need will be provided in the box. 
Zintha will be available in a wide variety of vial sizes, up to 3,000 units. The carton includes a pre-filled syringe with a diluent, a plunger rod, a vial adapter, a sterile infusion set, alcohol swabs, bandage, gauze, and a package insert. You can refer to the storage details on your slide, which are similar for all of the products. It's important to note with Zintha that if you're using two vials, you're going to require a rapid fill connector to transfer the product into a single syringe. These will be able to be obtained at the clinic. It's recommended with Zintha that after product reconstitution, it be used within three hours. Make sure that the reconstituted solution is clear prior to infusing. A video is going to be provided by the manufacturer and it'll be available on this website. If you have any further questions or concerns about the preparation or reconstitution of this product, the nurses will be able to uh, help you at your appointment. The next product we want to discuss is Covaltry. As you recall from Dr. Title's presentation, Covaltry is a replacement for Cogenate FS and the packaging will be very, very similar. Again, it's, a, it's available in a wide variety of vial sizes, up to 3,000 units. And essentially, the storage and reconstitution directions are unchanged. Each kit contains a single-use vial, a pre-filled syringe, sterile water, and a sterile administration set with a vial adapter. And once again, it's recommended that once the product has been reconstituted, you use it within three hours. Different for Cavaltry, you will be provided with a coupon book to obtain a free supply of alcohol swabs, gauze, and band-aids from Shoppers Drug Mart to enable to do reconstitution and in administration at home. A link to a video from the manufacturer will be available on this website. The next product that we're going to discuss is Eloctate. As you will recall from Dr. Title's presentation, this is a new product, a new Factor 8 product with an extended half-life. You can see from the screen, from the slide that you're looking at, uh, the way the product will be provided for you. Once again, it's available in a variety of vial sizes, up to 3,000 units. And if you refer to this slide, you will be provided with some storage information. In your kit, you will be provided with all the supplies necessary for reconstitution and administration. Unlike the other products that we're discussing today, which should be used within three hours of mixing, the manufacturer's recommendation for a loctate is that it be used within six hours of, recommend, of reconstitution. Once again, a manufacturer's video will be available on our website to provide more information about a loctate. The last of the Factor 8 products we will be discussing today is Newick. Vial sizes for Newick, unlike the other products, are only at this time available up to 2,000 units. The necessary supplies for reconstitution and administration are provided in your kit. Please refer to this slide for storage recommendations. For Newick, once you have reconstituted the product, it must remain at room temperature and not, must not be refrigerated again, and it must be used within three hours. There is a recommendation that you infuse the product at a rate of four mils per minute. And again, there will be a video provided on the website by the manufacturer for further information. We're now going to discuss our new Factor 9 product, which is called Alprolix. You will recall that this is a product that has an extended half-life. On this slide, you will be able to see how this product will be provided to you. It's available, again, in vial sizes up to 3,000 units and you will be provided in your kit all the necessary supplies for reconstitution and administration. With Alprolix, it is recommended to warm the vial at to room temperature prior to reconstituting. 
The constituted product can remain at room temperature for up to three hours. It is important to note that during product reconstitution, this, this solution will take a few minutes to completely dissolve. And the product must be clear and colorless, otherwise it should not be used. The next slide is a comparison chart of all of the factor products that we have just discussed. I will not read through this slide, but please take the time to review the data on it at your own pace. We will now take a few minutes to discuss the steps involved in switching to a new product. It is important to speak with or meet with your hemophilia clinic team before starting a new factor concentrate. The exception for this will be the people switching from Cogenate FS to Covaltry, which is the next generation of the same product. So this will be an automatic transition. Please contact Antoinette Travis to arrange an appointment for you to discuss product choices with Dr. Title or Dr. Scholzberg and the hemophilia nursing team. A nurse appointment for the product switch will be booked at the time of factory ordering. Those who now use Advate will be the first to transition to a new product. Product switches will be booked on a non-clinic day. Please be aware of the fact that a nurse clinic appointment may last up to six hours if a pharmacokinetic study will be booked at the same time. The first dose of your new product will be administered in the clinic so we can monitor for allergic reactions or other side effects. And we'd like to remind you that these are very rare. At your first visit, you will have in your infusion of the new product, factor 8 or factor 9 levels will be checked at 15 minutes, and if a pharmacokinetic study is booked, also at 1, 4, and 6 hours after the infusion. If it's possible, we will ask you also to return to the clinic for a 24-hour post level to provide further information. You will be given an appointment to return to the clinic in three or four months for a factor eight or factor nine and inhibitor check. If you're on home infusion, you will be given a six week supply of your new product on the day of the switch. And a letter will be sent to the hospital where you pick up your product informing them of your new factor concentrate. Please refer to this slide, the step-by-step -step guide to product switching to remind you of the next steps to be taken. I would also like to remind you at this time that it's important to continue maintaining good treatment records on your new chosen product. We hope that this comprehensive overview has provided you with the information you need to begin to make your choice. But of course, if you have any further questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact the nurse's clinic phone at 416 8645129 Thank you for taking the time to review these products with us and we look forward to helping you make your new choices.